Hey guys, I wanted to make another video here and beat a dead horse and talk about the electric guitar tone wood thing again. I got a lot of comments from that last video I posted. You can go check out that video. I'll link it in the description if you haven't seen it yet. Um, that really lays the groundwork for what I'm going to say here. And a comment that I received, which was actually a good comment, um, there were a lot of bad comments, but there was a uh, good comment I received uh, sort of sparked this off for me and, and made me want to talk about it again. What I want to do is read that comment or that question and read my reply to it as well and then just talk a little bit more about the reason why there's really no hope for the idea, the concept of tone woods in electric guitars. In the last video when I talked about this, the crux of my argument was really a, it was a contextual argument. I was arguing that the context for tone woods um, was set with under the assumption that you were building an acoustic guitar with an air chamber that would propagate sound waves out of the sound hole through the air, which is very different than what people are talking about with solid body electric guitars when they have to sort of come up with a new theory to explain how you literally get, you somehow with this completely divorced separate new theory, this theory that doesn't involve um, propagating sound waves through the air. With this new theory, you somehow still arrive at the same exact conclusions, the conclusions that, you know, Brazilian rosewood is the number one tone wood and that, um, you know, basswood is crap. The, all, all of these conclusions, statistically impossible that you're going to reach the same conclusion both of those completely different ways. Part of the problem that people are having, uh, specifically people who are kind of on the edge but still can't quite let go of the idea of tone woods on electric guitars. These would be like your, your centrists. These people are in the middle. They're the agnostics. So let me go ahead and uh, read the question here, the comment. Eric, thought I would watch your video to see if it did indeed bridge the gap in the debate over whether Miller Lite is less filling or tastes great. Sorry, I mean whether certain woods do or do not affect the solid body guitar sound. Okay, so he's making a comparison to Miller Lite there, which is kind of funny. Will's Easy Guitar, one of my favorite reviewers, provides one of the most profound arguments for no, and that British chap, Rob Chapman, says yes, they do. And by the way, I've since um, visited both of these channels, and so I know what this guy's talking about, and if you want to check out some of their, they've talked extensively about the whole tone wood thing. Sorry, I had to stop the camera for a second there just to feed the cat. So what I was talking about was, um, yeah, uh, if you check out Will's Easy Guitar and Rob Chapman, if you search those guys, um, you'll, you'll see two sides of this electric guitar thing. And really, I'm not in, I don't build electric guitars. I'm, I'm speaking on this sort of from the outside as an acoustic guitar builder, but I actually think because that's where the concept of tone woods came from, uh, that perspective is what that debate is missing. Okay, uh, now getting to his actual comment here or his question. Although I do follow your explanation, a couple of things I think may make sense for both arguments. If different woods have varying densities, when a sound wave created by strumming the guitar strings hits the wood, perhaps the amplitude of the sound wave changes a little or a lot, and when absorbed by the pickup's magnetic field, produce more, he says, warm, clear, or distorted, you name the adjective. What he's saying is, um, when absorbed by the pickup's magnetic field, 
it produces more of these certain distinct characteristics. Also, as one of your viewers commented below, how about the finish used on the wood, heavy slash light, etc., again causing a disturbance in the sound wave. Whether or not it is discernible to the human ear before it is amplified is, of course, meaningless. However, if you send that altered sound wave through an amplifier, then perhaps it does make a difference. My whole interest in this debate is whether or not to continue to buy inexpensive guitars with so-called inferior woods, electronics, tuners, etc., and focus my attention, attention instead on creating more tone choices with the amplifier, speaker, strings, and pedals. And my response to that, um, first of all, I just wanted to, you know, let this guy know that I really think he's going about it the right way, and this is part of the reason why I liked his comment. Um, I think it was a intelligent, investigative, open-minded look at the problem, rather than um, what so many people do, which is they become dogmatically attached to the either the idea of tone woods or even dogmatically attached to tone woods on electric guitars being a bunch of bullshit, which is the side that I'm on, of course. Um, but I don't have any dog in this fight at all. I don't build and sell electric guitars. So my response was this. Different woods do physically resonate differently, and so you get a different disturbance with a different wood. Part of the disconnect here, however, is in understanding how magnetic pickups work. They only pick up changes in the magnetic field, as in vibrations of the magnetic strings, not sound waves propagating through the air. A changing magnetic field creates the electric current. I'm sure some incredibly small amount of the disturbance in the wood is fed back into the string, ever so slightly altering the vibrational pattern of the string itself, which ever so slightly alters the magnetic field, which the pickups then pick up. But if you think about the initial energy of a plucked string and where it goes after it enters the wood, the overwhelming majority of it is going to be lost to the environment as sound waves propagating through the air. Because electric guitars recreate the sound by essentially reading the, ma the changing magnetic field and then amplifying that, they miss out on the wood's resonant effect on the surrounding air and environment which is what acoustic guitars are designed to capture and amplify. Add to this the sheer thickness of electric guitar bodies and the fact that it has to rest against some part of the body in order to be played, and there really is no hope for a discernible difference. So I just wanted to share that because, again, the video that I made before was really making the contextual case that you know, acoustic guitar makers were talking about an entirely different thing than what people argue about today on the internet when they talk about electric guitar tone woods. And I think I made that point very well, but I wanted to add this because I've heard a lot of people trying to make this case uh, either in the comments or on other YouTube videos that I've since watched where they're they're really trying to ignore the fact that the magnetic pickups are only picking up changes in the magnetic field of the strings. So when people talk about different woods, different species of wood, not just, you know, two different slabs of the same exact wood, but with, you know, slightly different grain and all that. I'm talking about when people talk about two different woods having different or um, supporting different resonant frequencies and that support getting somehow picked up by the pickups, they're often ignoring the fact that the magnetic pickups can only recreate, and that's what they're doing, they're recreating the sound based off of changes in the magnetic field. So they're reading the literal vibration of the string, creating the sound anew elsewhere in the amplifier, and then amplifying that sound. So all of the energy 
that is lost due to it being propagated into the surrounding environment and into the air is not being captured in that. And so I just wanted to add that little bit to the video I made before um, because I don't think it was clear enough the difference between magnetic pickups and an instrument that amplifies sound through the use of a sound box. Anyway, I just wanted to beat that dead horse again. Um, I love the comments. Honestly, I'm extremely open-minded about this whole thing. If you guys want to write me more comments or questions and, um, and prove me wrong even, I'm, I'm open to being wrong on this. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.